Hello everybody. I want you to listen to me to my explanation about impacted teeth, especially about diagnosis and surgical treatment of third molar. We are going to talk about the diagnosis of the lower third molar. Uh, first of all, we have to remain that everything depends on clinical records. Uh, you may <coughs> accomplish an oral clinical examination and the radiological examination to evaluate the shape, the root number, angulation and depth, relationships, surfaces of the second molar and bone surroundings. In the x-ray exploration you can uh, watch an overlapping of the root, loss of root canal narrowing of the root of the mm, inferior alveolar canal nerve and deflection of that canal or dilaceration. Uh, in this slide you can uh, show uh, how different can be the end, the end of the roots of the third lower molars in order to uh, be aware during the surgical treatment. Among the radiographic uh, tests to evaluate or assessment of the uh, position and uh, root shape, we find the X-ray periapicals, occlusals, orthopantomography, or uh, computed tomography, or convened computed tomography, mostly. Um, concerning to the surgical treatment, uh, we will follow up the next steps. Anesthesia, first of all, local anesthesia or sedation, conscious sedation, to help anxiety uh, in patients. Um, in uh, Spain, Spain you, we, use, we are used to uh, pharmacological uh, sedation with benzodiazepine, benzodiazepines, uh, not with gas, not with uh, uh, the other gases. Uh, after the anesthesia, the local anesthesia, because you cannot avoid the local anesthesia even if a patient is sedated, otherwise uh, it will hurt him or her, the, the surgical treatment, of course. After the anesthesia, we will follow up with the flap design. <clears throat> after the reflection of the flap, after the extraction, uh, next step will be the, uh, the, to check the socket before the suture and then we will follow with the post-op managing. The incision must be done uh, over the place where the third lower molar is. That is the end of the jaw uh, in the angle over the, the gum uh, in different shapes. Uh, you can uh, you can do an envelope uh, envelope uh, um, type of flap which is show up here in the arrow under the arrow or another kind of uh, of uh, flap uh, with uh, one uh, reflection or releasing uh, incision which is uh, co so called bayonet flap Afterwards is the reflection stage where you push up the gun uh, to show the, the bone, the bone where is uh, uh, catch the where is catch the third lower molar, and you um, attach this uh, flap, this uh, piece of the gun with um, a reflect reflector called Langenbeck or Faraday. After you go through the bone removal step, which uh, is made with a handpiece with uh, water to refrigerate the movements and to don't uh, uh, kill the bone cells, the osteoblast, with a heat drill, which uh, acquires a lot of uh, temperature, higher temperature. And you have to release all the shape of the crown in order to withdraw afterwards the, the, the lower molar uh, from this uh, space. You have to 
make enough room to uh, push uh, the third lower molar with uh, your instruments, with your elevators. Uh, the next step is the extraction itself of the third lower molar. Um, and you have to know that depending on the position of the third lower molar, uh, you may need a tooth division. Always you have to place your elevator in the medial aspect of the crown and to push against the crown of the third molar itself, avoiding to um, push the second molar uh, to not damaging, to not, to not damaging uh, their um, surface or uh, to not damage this uh, second molar, of course. You can cut uh, in different shapes the crown of the third lower molar depending on its position and depending on the number and the shape of the roots as you can see in this slide. I will follow up in the next slides the different uh, position of the lower molar and the different tooth division we, uh, we will accomplish in each case. In this position, the vertical position is very easy and uh, you have to cut in a vertical position halfway and halfway uh, both the crown and the roots. Um, you have to make enough room space, enough room, sorry, in the distal aspect of the surface of the third molar uh, in order to rotate this uh, crown uh, to the distal part or to the back uh, part of the jaw. Uh, another tip you can uh, have is to make a hole uh, in the surface of the crown to place there the end of your levator to uh, make a lever force to uh, withdraw uh, the third lower molar. Another position very common is the mesiangular position. Uh, in this, uh, in this uh, shape, in this uh, position, sorry, uh, we have to cut vertically to the part of the crown uh, to have enough room here to place here our levators and rotate the rest of the crown with the roots to the distal side of the jaw and withdraw, so withdraw uh, the third lower molar. In the distal angular position, we have to cut in an horizontal way all the crown with our handpiece and with our drill and there to crush um, gently the, the piece of the crown we have previously cut in order to have enough room to withdraw the both, both roots or uh, the unique root uh, that has the, the lower third molar. The horizontal position leads us to cut the crown uh, in a vertical way separating the total piece of the crown from the rest of the roots and so uh, getting enough room here to place our levators to leverage the, the rest of the roots out from the jaw. Afterwards, we have in the next step to check add up the cavity to find out if there is any piece of bone or any piece of root uh, which can uh, stay in the bone and can uh, lead us to a, an infection if we don't if we don't withdraw all the uh, the the alone lonely pieces we get there. And the, the end step will be the suture previous uh, and um, the homostasis of the cavity. Uh, the suture, as you can see, may need uh, many itches, many itches, four or five, it depends on the size of the flap previously made to extract the, on the molar. The, uh, uh, concerning to the post-op care, uh, you have to recommend your patient to relative resting with uh, physical measures like uh, saline mouth rinses uh, and uh, eyes over the face, over the, the angle of the mandible. Uh, perhaps in many cases you have to recommend antibiotics and non-steroid anti-inflammatory anti drugs uh, to avoid uh, pain and inflammation as much as you can to your patients 
and of course some analgesics. And that's all for my uh, uh, um, advices uh, among the third lower motor diagnosis and surgical treatment. Thanks a lot.